proper out of practice. It has been in a couple of weeks. I know. Coming to America, hasn't it? Yeah. Poor Kenny. Poor Kenny's been working hard. Kenny, he, Kenny. He has been battering that Twitter account and getting <laughs> us out there. Kenny's a grafter. He is a grafter, yeah. <laughs> Good lad. Good lad. Hello and welcome to Watch It If You Can. My name is Liam. My name's Dave. This podcast is all about box sets we've created of our favourite films and TV shows. Some you've seen, some you won't, and others you may never ever want to watch. However, we can say if you've never seen Trading Places, all I'm going to say is put all your money on the Duke Brothers. All we want to do is have a chat about these films and TV shows we love so much and maybe just maybe you should watch it if you can. Dave. Liam. How are you? I'm alright, yeah, it's snowing. It's, it is snowing and it's March and yet it's snowing. It's crazy. So it, it was a hell of a walk to get here. I'm bringing Huskies next time. <laughs> so let's get cracking. This is box set two. It is. We're going to go and open it up, take that lovely polyphene plastic off, that lovely smell when you open a new box set. We're going to pull the first DVD out. And Dave, what is it? Well, I keep mine sealed, but anyway. Um, it is. It's Frasier. Um, so Frasier aired from 1993 to 2004, and it was 264 episodes. Oof. Um, if you've never heard of it, um, it's all about a you know recently divorced psychiatrist uh, called Frasier Crane. Uh, is moving back home from Boston to Seattle uh, to work on a local radio station uh, called KACL. Um, and we've got his dad Martin, who's an ex-policeman who's had to retire because he was shot whilst on duty. So he comes to live with Frasia, uh, with his dog Eddie, and then they then hire a living care worker uh, called Daphne Moon, uh, who's from Manchester here uh, in the UK. And we also meet his brother Niles, his radio present, uh, producer Roz, and there's also a reoccurring character, uh, Bob Baldock Briscoe. Okay, it's... is uh, such a great choice, so... Out of all the reasons, of all the sitcoms, why did you choose it? One being a Cheers fan. Yeah. Um, you know, you're always going to watch it, aren't you? Because, you know, Frasier was created by um, Dan Charles and Les Charles uh, in season three of Cheers. Uh, and he went on and he was in 202 episodes of Cheers. Um, I forget because obviously I'm in the middle of watching Cheers and I'm back about midway through season two and he's still not in it I think it was about third season he came into yeah. he was Diane's love interest initially wasn't he yeah and he wasn't he wasn't very popular to be honest and not very popular with um, Shelley Long no no um, so I know there was a bit of a, 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 a to do wasn't he with Shelley Long and going to the kind of the studio and saying she yeah. wants to be moved didn't she yeah. almost um, and I think there is an episode of, of Frasier later on where Che Long comes into it and I know Kelsey Graham has come out and sort of said that was kind of them sort of making peace and putting things to bed. But yeah, he, 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 202 episodes of Cheers. I didn't. I generally didn't think he was in that many. I, I no, no, I, I remember seeing I, I knew he was in for a bit, but it was only the first two seasons he wasn't in really mm. and then, then he was... I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest, right? He wasn't my favourite character in Cheers. But it's not kind of been yours. It, it's a strange one because his character development is quite big in Cheers because he comes in and he's, and he's really quite he's he's not rounded character. He's quite he's quite pompous, but he becomes a part of the gang. Essentially, yeah, and he, he and he is, it, the edges are smoothed and that, and then weirdly in Frasier he goes back a little bit to some of the more pompous elements but still but with more caveats to him as well so it's it, it, it's. I mean I like I was only 14 when Cheers finished so I was only watching it as like a kid so I didn't like when you, when you watch a show at that age like I didn't grow up wanting to be Frasier 
everyone wanted to be Sam, didn't they? Yeah. You know, he was the ex-baseball player. He was famous. But we, all, got grew, the we all grew up to be Woody. We all grew up to be Woody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sam owned the Sam owned the bar. Sam yeah. owned his. So when I was watching Fraser at that age, I don't think I'd have had any aspirations to be Fraser or anything. No. Um, but then Fraser obviously got his own TV show, um, and this is obviously it's more of a show around family isn't it Marvel, yeah than, which cheers sort of was but it was set in the bar but i just think that the cast for this is just so good the jokes just come thick and fast i think it's one of those shows that probably when i was watching it younger i didn't get all the jokes mm. and i think now we watch the whole thing uh as an adult you've just realized what a clever show it really I've is i've got down here there's not a single wasted line in any episode of frasier it's yeah. Just the writing is immaculate. Consider how many episodes there is now yeah, in the season yeah. to, to, to do that for every episode. Another thing, though, as well is, and, and as you know, because we both wanted to do it, we both wanted to work in radio, and I think that piqued my interest because I love the studio that Fringe yeah. is in to do it. You know, I used to watch shows like Midnight Caller just because I wanted to work on the radio. So I think... It was like they piqued my little interest there and went, like, we've got a character from Cheers who's going to work in a radio station as well. And I was like, oh, God, I might watch that. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, for, for our listener who doesn't know, we, we're both ex-professional <laughs> hospital radio <laughs> presenters, aren't we? Um, I think as well, obviously for putting it on the list, apart from Frasier himself, there is the whole... Daphne and Niles, will they, won't they relationship that, you know, it took seven seasons for that to even to even really happen as well. So, yeah. I think um, one of the things I remember, and this is what I associate with Frasier, is years later, it was repeated every morning on Channel 4, I seem to remember. Yeah, it was always and, on at like nine, half nine. And I, I I can't remember, I had a routine, maybe when I was going to college or uni, where I wouldn't leave the house until I'd, I'd finished watching. <laughs> it was me, it was knowing you, you're leaving it as late as you possibly can. And it was like, the minute Fraser finished, like, I have to leave the house right now or I'm going to be late. Yeah, I don't used to give me a lift to work and she'd be waiting downstairs and I'd be like, Fraser, just, just not because it used to be like Cheers was on for years every morning. Yeah. Then it was Fraser and sort of. Uh, same thing was like Everyone Loves Raymond was on yeah. just before yeah. and some of the other, you know, King of Queens and those type of comedies. So I was the same as you. So I did watch them originally. But I think there's episodes I think I've seen about 10 times because yeah. they're on, just on repeat, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so we know why you love it, but who's in it? So Frasier was played by uh, Kelsey Grammer. Um, as we said, best known for playing the character in Cheers. Um, he also played Frasier in uh, a series called Wings. Which is another Charles Burroughs Charles. So it's two Charles brothers. James Bur- Burroughs. And James Burroughs, who's the director, isn't it? That's right. So I don't think Wings ever made it to the UK, it did I? Didn't did. I, I've on never seen it. The Paramount Comedy Channel, which used to be on cable, it was on there for a bit. Oh, but we don't think we had it at the time. Like the no, no, it, was it wasn't. Released. It wasn't around the time. It was. It was. It was chucked on like 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 three o'clock in the morning or something. I seem to remember. I do remember. I do remember actually watching an episode. I don't remember him being in it. Was he in it much or was? I think it, it was just one. I think it was just one or two episodes. But yeah. I know he was. Um, I think he was Emmy nominated for the yeah. for the performance in it. Um, so he. He was Frasier, as we said, in Cheers for 202 episodes. But, of course, as well, he is the voice of uh, Sideshow Bob in The Simpsons <laughs> and the Prospector in Toy Story 2. Yeah. So I think everyone will know him from that. He did play Beast in the X-Men Last Stand movie, if you've ever seen that. Um, I think one of his best cameos for me, though, is in um, 30 Rock, playing himself for a couple of episodes, and they're, they're like, absolutely genius. Um, but the recommendation I've got, and probably not a lot of people have seen this, but he was in a series called Boss. Now, it only ran... I've never for, seen it. So but I've yeah. seen it. So it only ran for 15 episodes. He played a character called Mayor Tom Kane. And the, the unfortunate thing is, it, it didn't take off and it, it was cancelled. But I think if it was on now because of Succession and 
yeah. if it was on sort of a HBO or type, because he is absolutely amazing, isn't he? Well, I got that. I watched, I'm sure it was an Amazon or Netflix owned series, The Last Tycoon, which is set in the Hollywood studio system of the 40s or something. He's in that as well. I, I remember watching a couple of episodes and never really went back to it, but he is. He, he's not got a big part in it, but he's right. a good reason. But again, he's got he's got presence when he's on screen, and and yet we were saying he hasn't done. He's done a lot, but not. Well, I mean, don't forget he was in face for yeah, such so a long a time, time as well. Um, but should we talk about this acting style that he's? That he's got because it's. I find it like it's weird. It obviously yeah. works for him. So he he does this thing which is called uh, requisite disrespect, and what it means is that he'll only rehearse once with the you know the people who are in that particular scene, and then he goes away and learns his lines until that last moment of shooting, which the regular cast apparently were used to. Yeah, they got but used all the guest stars couldn't hack it. Yeah, and I do see both sides to be honest because it obviously works for him. I think. It plays into, and it's funny we mentioned this about when we talked about the IT crowd, is it's Frasier is a great example of a comedy farce. Yeah. Where it's, it's a scenario that's set up and everything just goes wrong. And I think it works because Frasier gets himself in a pickle. And that's it. So, mm-hmm. so his, this method keeps him on his toes that it's a more natural reaction yeah, and I, to what's and going on I think on. it's perfect and you can like, I didn't know that until we, we did the research and I've been thinking about that it's like that does actually I can see how his performances are quite natural because he's, he's sort of going by the fly of his pants in other words in a lot of it yeah. what, he's, what he's really good at is those emotional scenes as well yeah. and, and probably because of that the way that he learns the lines right before, and he doesn't rehearse those scenes over and over. It it it, it does come across natural because definitely when certain things are said and you look at the reaction in his face. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's the he, he's the main star, um, just, title just character. But one little thing, yeah. uh, when was, he's recent, he's just done a film where he plays a soccer coach, and I I say the word soccer coach because it's obviously an American film about <laughs> football, not not. Actually, what they call soccer, but it's only just come out. The IMDb rating is nearly nine, and it's it's. I've never heard of it. It's called High Expectations, so I'm definitely going to dig that out. I think the high, the IMDb rating is about eight point seven, eight point nine, and I'm like, I need to watch this. So it's basically he right. plays he plays um the the soccer coach of this American um what's their what's their league over there? I was going to say the MLA. major league, the major, major league. league. Uh, yeah. Looks like he's the manager of a major league team and his son is a player who he sacks from the team and then the son has to go find his own way in the world. Oh, right, interesting. So it literally just come out, literally, I saw and thought, I'm going to have to dig that out because it, it does look interesting. I just like the idea of seeing Kelsey Grammer on a football pitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, playing Niles then, his brother is David Hyde Pierce. Um, he was nominated uh, for 11 consecutive years, uh, winning four Emmys. Um, so just, just to show you how good yeah. uh, Niles is in the, in the show. Uh, he's probably most famous, really, for... Um, he was in the stage production of Monty Python's Spamalot. Um, also appeared in The Simpsons as well. Um but my recommendation for David R. Pierce is a, is a movie called The Perfect Host from 2010. Um, it's a serious kind of drama, and I won't I won't say too much about it because I'll I don't want to spoil the movie. But if you're looking for if you enjoy Frasier and looking for a film to watch with David R. Pierce, and I would def- definitely recommend The Perfect Host. I picked out. I completely forgot he was in in this film. The um... Wet Hot American Summer, 10 years later. It's a it's a comedy, Paul Rudd's in it. And um, oh, again, I'm, forgive me for the name, Janine Garf- Garofalo. Garofalo. Yeah. Um, and the, basically they were all um, summer camp counsellors and it was they all came back to do it 10 years later and he's in that and he's brilliant in that as well it's it's, it's an okay film but he is good I in it I haven't seen that no. yeah um, Martin then 
uh, who's the dad. Uh, it's played by John Mahoney, who's um, sadly no longer with us, but he's been in he's been in lots of music movies. But um, Frantic is a great movie. Eight Men Out with Charlie Sheen. Um, I think probably one of the first films I see him in was Striking Distance with Bruce Willis. Um, he as well is also in an episode of Cheers. Yes, I saw that. I can't yeah. ever actually recall him being in it, but Sam yeah. Flembeck in a 1992 cool. episode, um, and also a film that is going to be part of Box Set Two podcast. He's in the Iron Giant. Yes. Um, oh, you give a bit of a spoiler, spoiler away for Box Set Two. <laughs> I picked out. Um, I remember him in Reality Bites, which is Ethan Hawke went on a rider film. I love that film. And he's also in the line of fire, which I'd completely forgotten about as the well. The Clint Eastwood movie. Yeah, he's in there. And also, he's in Tin Men, which is a Barry Levinson film. Um, Barry Levinson did Tin Men and he also did With Diner. Danny DeVito. Yes. And Great I movie, love yeah. Barry Levinson films and I'd forgot he was in that. So it was like, yeah, he was, he had. He actually had a really good film career pre Frasier as well, didn't he? He was, he was well and established. Grew up in Manchester? Yes. Which I I didn't realise. No, is... I didn't. I I generally didn't know that. Um, but that does then nicely lead us into Jane Leaves, who plays Daphne, character from Manchester. No, she is English, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. Um. So she was already known probably to UK viewers because she was in the Benny Hill show. Yeah. Um. She then went to America. She's popped up in loads of shows. Um. Some I used to watch, uh, like uh, Hooperman, with John Ritter. Uh, she was in My Two Dads. Um, she was in Who's the Boss. She's she was done, in Blossom. She's done a lot of <laughs> like, one episode. Like, she's done a lot of guest yeah, appearances, she's, hasn't she? Yeah. She's popped up in loads. Um, I haven't seen this, but she's currently playing a character called uh, Kick, Kick Boss in The Resident, which I haven't seen yet. I've got down here, uh, one of the writers of Frasier went on to do a series called Hot in Cleveland, and she's in that. As well. And that's meant to be really good as well. There's quite a few series of that. So, um, yeah, no, that's on my list to watch as well. A um, couple of characters to talk about. Roz, who's uh, Fraser's radio producer, uh, played by Perry Gilpin. Um, she also appeared in Wings and also appeared in Cheers. Mm, um, just it? one episode, I think. She, if you look at her IMDb, she has done loads of voice work. She's been in things like King of the Hill. She's in the Hellboy animated series and she's also done a Justice League animated series as well. Um, lastly, but not least, lastly, um, Dan Butler, who plays um, Bob Bulldog Briscoe. He's a, he comes in as a he, he, sort of, he's another radio presenter in the station, mm, isn't he? But yeah. then he becomes a reoccurring character. He's a sports presenter, yeah. isn't he? And it's always, it was, that, it was that clash between Frazier, who's highbrow, yeah. and Bulldog was really lowbrow. But, if you ever seen him in real life, he's he's complete opposite to who you think. Yeah, he's 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 what's he's he's gay. He's married to to I can't remember the, the his partner's name. He couldn't be any different because yeah, he's yeah. A, he's a proper womanizer in the film. Yeah. I mean, in in sorry in the, but in that, the series. But that real manly sports loving type man. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's he's really good acting actually. You know, he's always chasing Roz, and you know that the, they do get together for a period, but. Um, he is in uh, one of my all-time favourite films. He's in Manhunter, which, if you haven't seen, is just a, a brilliant film. You know, he hasn't got a huge part, but just the fact that he's in Manhunter is is, is enough for me. He's, um, I've got one more, which wasn't really sort of cast, but Maris well, um, was almost in it. Um, this is this is Niles' wife, so, isn't it? Niles, so in the, in the series, we never see Niles' wife. Um, I was, but the idea was that originally they were going to cast it but then they did like the idea that the same as Vera in Cheers yeah. where we never seen Norm's wife so they stuck with that um, but another character we've got to talk about obviously is Eddie hmm. um, Eddie is played by Moose <laughs> um, and Eddie was 14 years old um, so Eddie's the dog and he was 14 when it ended and what happened leading up to that is um he, he did have two kids, so Enzo ended up playing um, Eddie. I love the way you just said the dog had two kids. <laughs> yeah, two kids, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was more so. It was married more because... two kids, yeah, the house. <laughs> yeah, married. Uh, because he had Miko, that was too small. And then um, he had Moosey, 
which was um, it looked too different to Eddie. But the funny thing with Moosey is Perry Gilpin, who played Moz, adopted Moosey, ah, which that's is a cool. nice story. No, didn't they? No, and he, well, the, the nice story I did read was um, they did bring Moose back for the very last episode and brought him out and got the biggest, oh, Betty did, the biggest yeah. round of applause. Yeah. Okay, so there's there's a rundown of who's in and what else they've been. I'm I'm gonna have a, the next question is what's your favorite character? I'm gonna say to I think I know who it is, but what's your favorite character too? It's Martin. Ah, oh, I was gonna go for, I was gonna go for Niles. I've no, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna tell you why now. So it's like we, it's like we rehearsed it. Yeah, with, <laughs> with Martin, right? He is us. He yeah. He's the audience, and. I don't think the show works without him at all. No, no, he he, he grounds Niles and Fraser, doesn't he? It, it, like, yeah, you can see the the pompousness just going up and up and up, and he just manages to to just check it. He, he's there to be just as confused as us. Yeah, by kind of their behaviour, isn't it? Because they are like. The spoiled, the pretentious, they're a bit stuck up. And the they do egg, look down on everyone and as well. And they egg each other on as well, don't they? Yeah, yeah, and I just love how they kind of, like, they cut to Martin. You know, when they say something about, like, buying, like, a a, a precious salt server or something like that, you, you almost expect Martin to look right at the camera. You know, like they like would do now when you get into the, the office and yeah, those yeah, kind of things. Yeah, yeah, they, they do have those, like moments where even he's in the background and you'll see him shaking his head yeah or you'll see him smile and you're thinking he's the he is the audience you know all the characters grow and martin especially as well you know he does go from sort of he's quite tough quite reserved and he doesn't want to spend time with them you know they don't really want to spend time with him you know certainly Fraser doesn't really want to live with him and you can see from like the first episode niles is quite happy to kind of palm him off on Frasier coming back. But by those later seasons, you know, the the, the, the scenes where they're always eating dinner together in the yeah. apartment. They, 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 they both, like, all the characters, like you said, do develop so well in Frasier. It, it, yeah, it's... They, you know, they, they, they start going for meals together. They do trips together. Um, and there's only, um, I think it's 15 years. There's only 15 years between Kelsey Grammer yeah. and John Mooney in real life. Um, but apparently, Fraser, yeah, so I'm calling Fraser, you know, Kelsey Grammer has seen John Mooney as a bit of a, a father figure in, in real life well, on the show as I well. I heard he didn't have to, he didn't have to um, cast or nothing. He basically, someone suggested them, and Kelsey Grammer just, just rang him up and said, Would you be my dad? That was it. <laughs> that was it. And went, yeah. And, and the other interesting thing as well is David Hyde Pierce has come out and said, like, he had no interest in opera and all that sort of stuff and it's John Mahoney that introduced him yeah so in real life it's it's the opposite he, you know he, he is the kind of cultured one I think um, in the in the series is the gruff ex-cop but I just think <clears throat> you know along with every, or everyone who has the character development I just think he it, it doesn't work without him See, I don't think this is quite funny because I took the guess you were going to say Niles so I, I think Niles is the breakout character from the series he just and, and, and for what I've read he wasn't even initially written into the, when he the, the, had the idea of no. doing things it was it was one of the writers that said I've worked with this guy in some house and I said from the minute I saw him he looks like Kelsey Graham's brother he acts like him he sounds like him and then as you were getting the first like script ready they brought him in and they, they just went oh my god it, it just worked yeah. but it wasn't planned that way so he's definitely the breakout character when it first came out he was the ones like he just he, to me he's a natural yeah, isn't he he's really funny and I love the way he goes further than Frasier and everything as well but then they do like I said they egg each other on so well yeah, I just the competition think, between oh, the two the fantastic I, I easily could have picked Niles to be honest and I mean I usually could have picked Frasier, all of them. I just think for the importance of the show, if you take Martin out the yeah, show, oh yeah. I don't know if you engage as much without him there. But it's quite funny because I preempted you were going to say Niles. I was thinking, well, because that's who I would probably pick. Yeah. But I picked for, for the podcast Roz, and the reasons put down was is she's the down to earth and the voice of reason because yeah, she is she's, as well. And I think she's when 
especially outside of the home, she's when Fraser doing stuff, she's the one who's like, and, and do you know, what yeah. I mean? she pulls him back a bit as well. And in work, she's very cutting with him. And he's... The, the, the other thing, come back to the character development with Voz, Voz and Niles from the first few series. Yes. Like, Niles used to not even remember her name, he'd yeah. be dismissive of her, he'd make jokes. And by the later series, they do things together, and yeah. you know, um. I think she's like the bridesmaids and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's de- it, it it it's still Martin for me. I just think he's John Mahoney's amazing, isn't it? All right, then. So that's so so Martin's your favorite character. <laughs> favorite? We've got we the questions normally favorite scene or episode. Uh, oh, take your pick on this one, Dave. It's so hard because there's eleven seasons. There's two hundred and sixty four episodes. <laughs> it's a lot of scenes. <laughs> that's a lot of scenes. It's a lot of scenes. Um. There's a couple, so there's a couple of things I picked out. So the bit that always gets me is the argument in episode one. So when Frasier and Martin have that sort of argument right to the end, and it's all around Frasier sort of then saying to him, you know, you, you, you haven't thanked me for kind of letting you move in. Because he, he sort of has, Martin sort of been forced on Frasier. Um, you know, Niles is kind of like, say, palmed him off he moved in and they just have that big argument and he, he says you know you know a thank you would be nice and he walks off but then later Frazier gets a caller and a guy's talking about all his problems at home and you quickly realise yeah. it's Martin on the phone um, and he says thank you and, and then he f- says and Frazier picks up on it straight yeah. away they both, it's, they, they both know what they're trying to say to each other because they couldn't the fact that Fraser's shrink, they couldn't actually talk to each other, which I found fascinating with that scene. So the only yeah. way they could talk was via the radio it's, show. It's that thing, isn't it, where they say, like, you should talk to someone. If you've got a problem with someone, talk to them in the car because you don't look at each other, yeah. do you? And yeah. it's it's that equivalent of, you know, he phones his radio show. But the bit that, oh, and it always makes me laugh, but I also think it's sad is when he says, like, you know, he says thank you to Fraser, and then he goes... Did you hear me? I said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's like, it's just, I just love the end in that first episode. Um, but for my favourite one, um, I've gone with season five, episode 20. Um, I think I think it's called The First Date, but it's an episode where Niles, he decides to ask Daphne out. So the, there's 11 seasons of backstory here, but basically yeah. Niles is now divorced. He's single. Um, he plucks up the courage to ask Daphne out on a date, but he he, he can't do it. He can't yeah. go through with it. Um, there's a bit of a mix up, like I say, comes back to that whole Far. fast this thing, is doesn't it? The neighbour accidentally gets invited on the date, well, isn't it? <laughs> leading up to that, that's what happens. He tells Daphne he's going on a date with his neighbour Phyllis because he, he wants to ask Daphne out, gets all flustered. There's a bit of a mix-up. He tells who he's got to date Phyllis, Phyllis. In the episode, there's like a side story where like Fraser's just trying to watch the last episode of this TV series. That on its own is funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the whole episode is around, we actually think Niles has got the courage to ask Daphne out and he can't do it. Um, so he ends up with this, the, this date, which is like dinner at his house, Daphne comes around to actually help him cook yeah. the dinner for this woman that's obviously never coming. Um, but there's a scene in the kitchen where they, they both start singing and like it's just so sweet. And also, like at the end of the episode, Niles, you think he's gonna, he is gonna ask her out, but then she tells him about like how she would never date someone who's like going through a divorce yeah. and it's like it's really like it's just heartbreaking because you know prior to that like as you said the neighbour does turn up Phyllis yeah. so you know there's a bit and where Fra- you think because it's Frasier's dead as well is he oh it's Phyllis is this your date yeah. or something like because that because one of the things is that Frasier finds out Niles is lying to, to Daphne about this date and says it's going to blow up in your face yeah. and he opens the door and it's Phyllis and Frasier goes kaboom <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's just like it, uh, I, the whole episode is like heartbreaking, though, because yeah. you know, for seasons and seasons, there's been this whole sort of Daphne's never known, so it's a sort of will they won't they, but because she you know, overhears them in the kitchen, but not fully. she hears that he's you know yeah. he, he wants he wants yeah. to have a date. I think you know, it's just. I just love the episode and like it comes back to you talking about Dave Hyde Pierce being the breakout star. 
but those two in that scene are brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And the heartbreak on his face is is unbelievable. But there's I, I there is a quote that I just like from the episode, and it's Niles because obviously you know he's he, he's loved her since like the first first time we've seen him and she's and Al says um what's that perfume you're wearing and Daphne says I'll leave it to you to notice it's obsession and he goes no it isn't I'm just curious <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, it, I see, love that one I was having a little because as soon as as soon as you said phrase you were going to do phrase the one episode that I went back and, and watched the one that pops into my mind instantly is the the ham radio episode where the radio stations so doing like they go back and Fraser digs out the old radio play and he, he's going to direct it, rewrite it and star in it. And in typical Fraser, it just all goes completely wrong. And again, Niles performance when he ends he up steals coming the episode. He, he does about six voices, but it's all because Fraser's arrogance gets the most of him. And it it that it's that complete farce element. And how they are, the two for two men that are so clever, how stupid and so idiotic they can. Both They've got get no them. common sense, yeah, have they? Yeah. So they're they're really intelligent, aren't they? In terms of yeah. you know the very literate and um, you know got probably got their PhDs and all sorts, but genuinely like because there's a whole episode about where they go, um, they can't um, fix the car. Yeah. Yes. So they sign, you know, they sign up for that class, and then they suddenly realise they they can be the naughty kids in school. But um, I think like day to day stuff, they're not. Yeah. And I think when I've been watching a few episodes leading up to this, I think this is just an example very similar to what you just said when Frasier opened the door and just goes come boom. One of my favourite moments of Frasier and. And it's a scene where he doesn't even... The moment is he doesn't say anything. But it's the episode where Martin gets sort of roped into making a political video for this right-wing candidate. And he believes in aliens. Yeah, and it's that moment. So so because Fraser and Niles are horrified, he's, he's, Martin's going to like doing his vid, this, this, this campaign ad for like a right-wing nutter. They get the, the Democrat... Um, runner and do a video and they're on the balcony and it's just that moment he admits he's been abducted by aliens and it's Fraser's <laughs> face when he just turns around and I was like it's just and I'm going back to what we said about that actor method he has mm. that where it comes into play yeah. because his reaction is real and I, and I don't think anyone shouts get out Better than Frasier. No. <laughs> you know, when he's like shouting at Niles yeah. or whatever. Just, yeah. So they, they, you know, I know the episode you said I did watch the other day. It's brilliant. And there's, but it's so consistent. So picking an episode is, we could sit here all day, just pick episodes. But what about music? Is there any standout music as far as you're concerned, soundtrack wise? So there's only the title theme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Kelsey Grammer sings the title theme. Um, so Bruce Miller is the song's composer, and what what he said was he was told to avoid like any direct references to what the show was about. So stay away from like psychiatry, mentioning radio shows, yeah. even the name Frasier, uh, just anything directly that indicated kind of part of the show. So what he wrote is quite clever now. So he wrote. Uh, hey baby I hear the blues are calling so that refers to the patients with the troubles yeah. calling in to, you know, to the radio and show and classic blues line as classic well classic blues line uh, toss salads and scrambled eggs so that's things that are mixed up which is like Frasier's patients um, maybe I seem a bit confused so that's Frasier's personality always yeah. a little bit confused but the next line is maybe but I got you pegged because Frasier does understand these people and does help them. Um, I don't know what to do with these toss salads and scrambled eggs. So, you know, it's a tough business, but I've got to deal with all these crazies, basically. Um, and then the last line is, and they're calling again. Yeah. So it's just that, that, that to be told, right, you've got to write a song for a series, 
but you can't reference really what the series it's is about. Brilliant. It's brilliant. You know, writing. you can't have the yeah. title of the of the, the show know, in there. And you know. I love the way they only bring the vocals in on on the outro as well. You don't play it on the intro, do the it's only yeah. The intro is just a couple of seconds yeah, of the, yeah. the phrase, and then it has a different you know a balloon will come up or the moon or something. and I love the bit at the end where the credits come up Frasier has left the film <laughs> <laughs> the other thing with the opening as well is you know what season it is because it's a different yes. it's a different colour isn't and it and there's a little Each animation one. as well like the yeah. not they're noticed. always different for like yeah. different uh, episodes but yeah the, the, the title theme itself I just like the story behind the the, the theme itself it's brilliant and he, he sings it so well as well I love it. okay so um, this question is I really struggled thinking about this one myself, so I don't know how you got on, but it's our usual question is, what would you change? So I've got two things, right? Oh. One isn't aimed just at Frasier. This is aimed at all sitcoms. I hate any external filming in a in a studio-based yeah. live audience yes. sitcom. It just puts me off because I also think that well, the audience is just watching a recording the same mm. way I'm watching a recording, and and I don't know, you know, I've never I've never watched like a series being filmed, but I imagine being there, the laughs are more genuine, aren't they? Oh, it's it's it. This is why it works, as we I mentioned it so many times. The farce is theatre. It works, Frasier, because it's in a live audience. That's it's yeah, it's um, it, the 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 adrenaline of the of the crowd make it even funnier and I think it probably brings out the performances better oh, as yeah. well doesn't yeah, it yeah. so there's, it doesn't happen often there's there's, there's not a lot of times it happens in Frasier the, the one episode I'll forgive is like I think it's the 100th episode where they film it in and around Seattle so that makes sense mm. because you know the, you want to do that for yeah I know what you're saying it literally any scenes like that and it comes stand out a mile it, 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 it takes me out of the, yeah, the episode yeah, to be yeah. honest and so as well this is very similar where they film things from the opposite angle. Oh yeah, that, that, so you you know they've had to stop because move the camera. It's the fourth wall thing, yeah, isn't it? You know yeah. where you are, and and because sitcoms are that situation comedy with multi camera sort mm. of you. It's yeah, yeah. It, because it, what because what I like in sitcoms is even when they do the scenes where they sat in the car. Okay, it's really obvious the background's fake. But you know the car's in the studio, yeah, and everyone's watching yeah. that, and I, so it doesn't. The fact that the background looks fake doesn't bother me one bit because I think, in my head, I prefer the fact that everything's in the studio. Yeah, any time they come out of a studio in any sitcom, it it, it doesn't resonate with me, and it, it and the, and I, you know, Friends is one example. I think like obviously they're in London, but a lot of that external stuff I I don't find it as funny as when they're actually in the studio. I know what you're saying. It's just a little bit. It's just weird. It's just it's just not the same. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't work for me at all. <coughs> um, the other thing I, I want to change is, <coughs> it, and it it's not a criticism of the show or anything like that. It's just I would have liked to have seen Frasier have a love interest for a lot longer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, it was, see where it was I'm coming too, from? It, it, it's such a long time. It would have been nice to see the character progression with someone. Yeah, I think even if it was just for one whole season, because we constantly see him come on, going on dates, they're constantly going wrong. Yeah. And it, it can't be that he ruins absolutely every relationship in yeah. the first week or the first month. Um, so you know, all the obviously we know Niles and Daphne get together. Martin has a few sort of long term relationships, yeah, yeah. and I think as well that would have been another maybe heartbreaking story of Frasier. You think because there's a really sad episode where he's he, he goes to see his old professor, and it is like a two man stage show, and he's asking him is he happy and stuff like that, and you know he sort of you know he's pretending to be interviewing himself, and he says he can't answer the question. And it would have been really interesting, I think, to have a whole season where Frasier's with someone and then it could end on a happy note even. Mm. It could have ended on a it, sad it, note. It was, they just never explored that angle at all, No, did they? and I, I, I suppose you could argue, you know, we maybe we'd seen it in Cheers because of Lilith, um, you know, who, who, who he was married to. Possibly, but I just I, think every, for every season and like he was eleven seasons, eleven seasons and no and long term. Yeah, yeah, I just think yeah. that I'd like to have seen that. Okay, like I said, I really struggled with this one because I do think it's pretty damn near perfect as a as 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 a TV show. 
Mine's more a little bit of apprehension for the for the reboot. I don't know if you if you okay, so yeah. I'm a little bit concerned because now Fraser and Kazagama is he's a seventy year old. Okay, so I'm just a little bit concerned whether it's gonna be a little bit of a and the reason I'm going to say this is because did you the reboot of Sex and the City got absolutely panned because it felt like it was just written by a 60 year old white man who hated everything that was liberal and young people. Do you get what I'm saying? That anti woke vibe yeah. really came through, and I didn't know this, but Cass Cameron was a Trump supporter, right? Okay, and I'm just like I'm a little bit apprehensive because. Niles and Frasier with with the epitome of that liberal art appreciation, you know, take everyone for what they are, and I'm just a little bit apprehensive of of that that element of is it just? I don't think so because the characters, if you're staying true to the character, then it's not it's not you you would like to think it's not going to happen. But Kelsey Graham is such an integral part. Um, that's yeah. the only, that that's my only concern. Yeah. I mean, the, the the fact that they've cast Nicholas Lindhurst is is really intriguing. You know, that already it's, pulls you yeah. in, doesn't it? You know, the, the, I don't know the guy they they've cast as Freddy, so Freddy, who's Fraser's son, is going to be in it along with the now son of Daphne and Niles. Oh right, okay. Yeah, I didn't so know apparently, that. yeah. So apparently, they they the, the, the yeah. side stories of them too. My reservations are just: is it going to be funny? To be yeah. honest, not not so much around the, the 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 themes. If it comes back and it and it flops and it's not funny, I hope it doesn't put people off going and yeah. you know, watching phase you've never seen it. Because if you, you know if you've got someone who's never seen it and watches part of the reboot and goes, "Well, this is bad," yeah, they're not going to go and watch it's, the original. It, it just. Concerned me because I remember I sat and watched the first episode of Sex and the City, not my choice, um, of the reboot, and it was awful. It was so obvious. It was written by an entitled white man because it was the guy who created it. Yeah. Was, and it was an episode about like they can't understand young people and, and their gender identity. They don't understand young people and race, and it was all just like. Oh, they don't know how good they've got it. That was literally it just that felt was like the it was like a thing. white man just ranting, and that's my only concern of the go down. And again, Sex and the City back in the day was was very liberal and open, and it was all about like you know, very similar to Frasier in in that respect. And then I found out that Kelsey Grammer was actually a Trump supporter, and I was like. Surprised Whoa. by that, yeah. Because the thing is, we get so wrapped up in the characters, don't yeah. we? We, we, you know, they're, they're completely different in in real life. You know, Kelsey Grammer, you know, had a spell of alcoholism, Ooh. didn't he? You know, he was, there's, yeah, there's he... an episode missing from, um, well, not missing, but there's an episode shorter on the series because he was in a car crash and he then had to check himself into a to a he... clinic. You know, these people are they're amazing actors. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sure David Hyde Pierce is nothing like Niles. You know, no, but Mark, it's, we, we know John Mahoney is the complete opposite of, of his yeah, real life. Yeah, but character. you were saying about the personal, like like Kelsey Grammer, it was it was wasn't just alcohol. He had it was a big drug problem as well. And I was reading an interview with one of the producers, and they said they knew for a while he had the problem, and he would come in and he would be hanging basically. And the producer said, I've never worked with someone who the minute that camera mm. went live, he just came alive and he nailed it every time. There was not an issue of him not going wrong. It's there's like Elvis, few, isn't it? Yeah, there was a few episodes where he, where you could tell they were saying at the height of his issues, Niles sort of took the, the centre stage for a few episodes. Right. And you can see that was where it may have been. It was the only, the only really from the outside an indication of, of what he was, but yeah, he was. He was. It, yep. it doesn't. It didn't affect the the, the show, did it? From you know, you wouldn't no. know. You wouldn't know, and and probably when it was on, that was our time. Because it was actually of, the cast that ended up doing an intervention to yeah. basically said you need you need help, and I think you know it's fast. It's fascinating to know that someone can do that, but they are so utterly good at mm. what they do that they can mask like anything and like drug addiction alcohol 
absolute chaotic personal life doesn't matter the minute Fully that the minute that light comes on and the camera's on boom they come alive okay so next question we always ask is what about impact what has Frasier created what's its legacy oh, well, let's talk about awards for one so it was nominated <laughs> 318 times for various awards uh, it won 37 Emmys and two Golden Globes and it wasn't until Game of Thrones actually came along that we beat Frasier's record of Emmy wins because they, they've now won Game of Thrones won 38 Okay. So I mean, I won't go into all the individual yeah, yeah. awards, but you yeah, know, but if you if, if you all look, cast won won did yeah, it everyone was, quite, was nominated. Yeah. yeah, I think David Ayer Pierce was nominated every year. I think it was maybe one year where Kelsey Grammer wasn't, which is start to wonder. Well, who were the who were the mm. people he was competing against? But um, he, they were an Emmy favorite, weren't they? Because it was just it was just oh, like you, it was so good. It was so <laughs> um, just. And I didn't know where to put this on. I thought this might have been the best place of all the questions. Thinking about impact or legacy, what associates slightly different for us because we're in 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 Great Britain in England, so it's not American. But that legacy of Channel Four Friday Night Friends and Frasier. Oh, cheers. Yeah, but at the, if you because I actually went back and looked Friends and Friends and Frasier almost run a year or two after each other, and. Every Friday night, new episodes, it was Frasier. It was Friends and then Frasier. Yeah. And for a couple of years, Friday night in and Channel 4 was massive. In yeah, this Channel country. 4 it, dominated it, the, the it's Friday It's fascinating night. to think about how just two shows dominated the TV, but, the but TV I, landscape. But I do think they, had, they did get Cheers first. And, oh, then, yeah. and then they did start getting some of those American comedies. So And I know some of them were like 6 o'clock, like the likes of Blossom and Mighty yeah. Dads, which yeah, we mentioned yeah. before. But it was... They were like, you'd watch Neighbours, which was on a half five, and then you put Channel 4 on the 6, because yeah. they would have an American sitcom but you're right with with with, with friends and Frasier, channel four just kind of they were they were unstoppable tapped into something it was, didn't they? you know we you sat in on a flat you we did not go out <laughs> but don't worry we went out on Saturday instead so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um okay so where can we watch it Dave? Um you can watch it on um channel four on demand or on Powerman Plus. Okay now normally we end on a question because we just wanted to mix things up a little bit for box set too because that's how we roll do you know what I mean we've decided to add a new element to the podcast and it's at this point every every episode we're going to ask a random question now when I say random question we pre-prepared pre-prepared is it 20 questions or, or I can't remember we, we prepared a lot of questions so and we've written random we've just chucked them all into a box so every week whoever's hosting is going to just dip their hand in pick out questions so Dave you're on the spot on this one so, so this is the mystery question so then. yeah let's let me yeah. oh there's a suspense <laughs> okay we need so, music we need the drum roll for the mystery do. question what is it okay um Recast movie or TV show, but set in UK or America. So it's an American show, and you're saying let's so. Recast basically, it if we recast it in in the UK or England, who, where would it be? Okay, let's go with Seattle. Where would we? Where would it be set? If it was set in, England? it'd have to be here, wouldn't it? In Liverpool, I think it'd have to be in Liverpool with the that that kind of an apartment on the front. <laughs> Overlooking the Liver Building, um, I I they, they spent five hundred thousand dollars to build that apartment. You know, Fraser's apartment. It is one of my. You know when you watch it's, things, it's like, iconic, isn't it? It's iconic. It's and like, I love the way it was exactly the same set he did uh, for Cheers on as well. The same. Yeah, it's the same same, same stage, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. So we recast Fraser, but with a UK. So UK, so you'd set it in Liverpool. I don't think it matters. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think you'd have to then cast. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Be good as Frasier, and he's a big favourite of our show. Hugh Grant. Oh yeah, that would be interesting. And would we have? Would the Daphne character be like an American? It'd have to be. It'd just, yeah. It would so be really yeah, you'd have to. You'd have to cast your main three. I would cast Hugh Grant as Frasier. Who would be his brother? His brother would be Hugh Lloyd. Oh. And 
the dad. The dad would be David Jason. Oh, that's... Oh. And Daphne would have to be an American. So if you... I would, you know what I was thinking of? I was thinking of like someone like Amy Poehler. But she's too funny. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Daphne's yeah. quite the again. She's she has no the, idea. She's funny, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. The, the, she's the straight person, isn't she? Kind of like yeah. She's not the, the she's not a comic foil, isn't she? I think Amy Poehler. Mind too, you, I haven't too. said that. Like I've, I've forgot about her psychic premonitions when she meets people. It's really brilliant. It's a little bit. Oh, I know. Do you know what? Can we go back to the what would you have changed? Yeah, I'm not a fan of. That okay, stuff. Are you not? No. See, I find that quite funny. The, the, the only the, I'm not a fan of it. I don't. Yeah. yeah. What I do like though is there is an episode. I don't know if you remember it, but Niles brings in uh, like a, another psychiatrist to to try and work out if she is psychic, and he does a load of tests on her. And he gets the results, and he's about to read them, and Niall says, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, I don't want to know, because it's part of you, and it's best not to know. Um, so, but yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of it. Oh, okay. I can't think, who would have cast for Daphne, though? Probably someone like... Um... I think someone like the... Oh, I can't remember her name. Jenna Fisher, who plays Pam in The Office... Yeah, that, she'd be good. Someone of that, do you know what I mean? You think of that sort of... Um, Who are you casting as Frasier? Oh, I can't think on the spot. I Straight away, when it, when it's, when you said that, I think Bill Nighy would be... Yeah, excellent choice. It would yeah. be quite interesting. Um, but then uh, maybe someone is like... Random as Gary Oldman, I'd love to see what he could do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because he's he's a really, and uh, with with Michael Caine as the dad. <laughs> I'm go, I'm going all Batman now, aren't I? You're going big budget as well. <laughs> this is this is gonna have to be a movie because we're not we're not getting eleven seasons of Michael Caine and Gary no. Oldman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously what we always do at the end of the show is we say, so what else would you like? If you like Fraser, you would like. I'm going straight away. I'm going to chuck in friends there because to me the synonymous they, they go hand in hand. They were both like tight, tight scripts. Both we were blessed to have two series of equal talent running at the same time. Yeah. It, it was it was an it was an age Friday night on Channel Four. It was it was t- the time to be alive. But also. I've chucked in Seinfeld as well. It's like, if you're going to have Fraser, you're going to have Seinfeld. Also, to bring back to what we said when we brought the IT crowd because of the farce, mm-hmm. which we then also, we talked about Faulty Towers, is the, I think is, and I, I don't think it's any surprise that the writers of Fraser based Fraser on Faulty Towers because you It's can, the blueprint, yeah, isn't it? It's literally, it's, this is, X, Y, Z always happens and it's how Fraser's character gets himself in the mix, but then continually makes it worse. Mm. At no point does something go wrong, and Fraser goes, "Ah, oh, the sensible thing here would be to do that." <laughs> it's never. They it's just, like watching a hobby movie, isn't it? And just, they're like, "Don't it, go upstairs," and they do. You it know. just gets. He just goes with. So, what about you? Oh, one of Rose here as well. Third Rock from the Sun is a very underrated sitcom. So. We, that, yeah, that is interesting, actually, because, do you know, he was nearly cast as Frasier. John Lithgow? Yes. <laughs> so you are bringing it full circle. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've gone with the obvious one, Cheers, which, you know... Yeah. You, the, for, for, our, for, for UK audience, it was definitely the first time we were introduced to, to, to Frasier. Um, another family comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond. Another Channel 4... Nine o'clock yeah, in yeah. the morning, one as yeah. well around you know around the same time. Um, I put Thirty Rock on there because I just love Thirty Rock. <laughs> just, just any opportunity, any no, opportunity. You to, know, next week when I do stand by me, you're going to go. 30 I'm Thirty Rock. I'll find a link to Thirty Rock. <laughs> um, you know, Tina Fey is amazing in it, but watch the just watch the Kelsey Grammer yeah, episodes. Yeah. You know, if, if you. Even if you don't want to watch Fairy Rock, just go find them episodes. Um, he's playing himself. Um, he gets into this bit of a, a farce again, where they've got this scam where they're they're getting refunds on cakes, 
with um with Ke- Kelly this Kenny and the um like the bellhop guy the, the, yeah I can't think of his name now my man's come back but they're just the, them episodes are brilliant um if you like Frasier you're gonna like I think a lot a lot more swearing a lot more rude but Kirby enthusiasm oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know that that type of comedy and where there's always a payoff at the end of the yeah. episode as well. You know, phrases like that, it can build to a, a punchline and curves like that as well. Um, you can sit there thinking what is going on for 20, 25 minutes and then the end will pay off. Um, a totally, totally random one. Again, this is more just because I want people to watch it. Succession. It's just all about a family that don't particularly get on. <laughs> just watch Succession. That's the, the message. So that was Dave's choice this week, Frasier. Watch it if you can. And Frasier has left the building. on Instagram at watch underscore it underscore podcast or on Twitter at watch underscore it underscore pod. Join us for all our previous episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Podbean and Amazon Music. Music.